Welcome to the viewers at home to Sabbath School Lesson Time. Uh, once again, we are dealing with the study of the book of Daniel, which we started. We are today doing lesson chapter lesson 12, which is chapter 11 of the book of Daniel. Yes, sir. Uh, the title of the lesson is From North and South to the Beautiful Land. And just before we continue with the lesson, let us open with a word of prayer. Let us close our eyes. Our kind and heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity of talking about your word. We are gathered here, Lord, to try and interpret your word. We can't do that without the Holy Spirit. It is for that reason that we invite the Holy Spirit to help us so that at the end of it all, we will say it was good to listen to the Holy Spirit interpret the Bible. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, once more to interpret the, I mean, to, to, to introduce the panelists that are in front of us. On our right hand side is Garabo Mutle. It's Kumbuzo Bongol on my left. My name is Luando Malotana, your host. Uh, we will be doing lesson 12. As we have said, uh, the memory text reads as follows. And I'm going to ask you, um, <coughs> Garabo, to, to, to help us with the memory text. Right. right? The, memory, the memory text is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 11. Verse 35. It reads as follows in the ERV, easy to read version translation. It says, Some of the wise people will stumble and make mistakes, but the persecution must come so that they can be made stronger and purer until the end, when will when which will come at the appointed time God has already set up. Now, this memory verse is very important, particularly for the book for chapter eleven. In order for us just to talk about gold. If, 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 we, if, we, if we find gold, in order for us to purify the gold that we find, we need to burn it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to burn it with intense heat until it loses its molecular structure and mm -hmm. burns down to liquid. Yeah. Now, the text says persecution must come. Mm. But when it begins, it says they'll make mistakes. In the King James Version, it says that those of understanding will fall, shall fall. Yeah. But mm -hmm. persecution must come. That means this persecution comes as an agent of purification. And it's exactly like that with gold. Huh. Because in order for us to harness gold, to harvest it, we must burn it. We can't take it as in its crude form huh. and trade it. Or we can't even put it in, in, in a store and buy it like that. But it has to be purified in order for its beauty to come out. And maybe that's why uh, in the text, God allows persecution and he says it must come as a purifier. That will strengthen people up until to the time of the end. So and the fact that we have accepted Christ and we're children of God is no guarantee that we are going to be sitting and relaxing and nothing's going to come our way. It's no guarantee. So, so. we are going to be hit by the devil. Yes. He's going to fight us for the very reason that we are the children of God. So in order for us to come out at the end as purified gold. Yes. In fact, uh, the acceptance of Christ is an admission on our part. Mm to say that we are gold that has impurities. Mm. Mm. So, 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 so it, it's as if this, this gold has a choice. Mm. There are those gold that chooses that I'm going to stay with my impurities. Mm. I don't want to be refined. Yeah. I don't want to come out on the other side as pure as gold. But we who have chosen Christ, we ad admit that we are sinful and we need a savior. Yes. yes. And, 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 and the Bible says that only through him can we be saved. So mm -hmm. only through him can that value be exposed. Exactly. But in the process of doing that, I think that's what the, 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 the memory text says, that uh, we will be refined. Yeah. We will be purified. And, 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 and that is what Karab is saying, that in going through that purification, it's mm -hmm. not going to be easy. Yeah. You are going to be taken from what you are. You are going to be... It's not, you know, you're going to be bent up such that you lose your original shape. Yeah. Yes. You become something totally different. Yeah. Beautiful. And in the process of becoming something totally different, you know, the impurities are able now to move off. Yes. And now, the, the, you know, God himself yeah. fashions what he wants to do with you. Certainly. So, so you have two things that happens here mm -hmm. in the process is that your character gets molded. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, your inborn traits... You know, that's, in fact, the interesting thing about it. I've done away it. with you. Your inborn trait. <laughs> yeah. Because if you go to any gold mine, 
and you go and, uh, and pick up a, a, any rock, by the way, I'm not a geologist, <laughs> if you go and pick up any rock, yeah. inside it, without its choice, that rock has impurities. Yeah. You know, so we cannot always rely upon uh, about our inborn abilities and say we were born this way. Yeah, we were born sinful, okay. just like that. Go. And, and there's a text also that I wish to read on that point. All right. And it's First Peter chapter one, uh, verse seven. Okay. It says that the trial of your faith. It says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. I think I love uh, your last point, that eventually the beauty of it all is the final product. Mm. That despite what happens to us in the process of being purified, but the eventual, but the final product has to be called, mm. which wouldn't be there if you're not puri pur purified. It's good. All right. Uh, that then introduces or ushers in uh, the, the actual uh, lesson that we're going to be talking about. Uh, but I think I should say, as the, as the lesson study uh, says in the introduction, that the chapter that we're going to be discussing today, chapter 11 of the book of Daniel, runs parallel to a lot of preceding chapters or visions that were given to Daniel. Mm -hmm. And we can make mention of Daniel chapter 2. We remember mm -hmm. the vision that was given to Daniel chapter 2 yes, of the head of gold uh, the, the, as, 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 they, as they go down, you know, from Babylon up until to, to Rome at the mm -hmm. bottom, yes, where there are feet that are mixed with clay. We do mm -hmm. know that um, the iron in the feet represents um, Rome and, and, and clay represent the papal Rome. Mm -hmm. So uh, chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, chapter 7 of the book of Daniel, chapter 8 and chapter 11, they run parallel. So whatever we're given in the vision of chapter 2 is what we're given in the vision of chapter 7 and chapter 8, um, respectively. And today we are going to be dealing with chapter 11. But what I like about these visions that are given to Daniel by God is that each and every time God gives Daniel a vision, he adds on more information that mm. did not appear in the other vision. For an example, there are things that do not appear in chapter 2 as, as detailed as they appear in chapter 7. Mm -hmm. So it is in chapter 8. There are things that appear like the little horn. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and we should, you should be able to, to extract, for an example, to say what is representative of Rome in chapter 2, what is representative of Rome in chapter 7, 8, and 11, etc. Okay. So we'll be taking this prophecy as it unfolds. But then the difference, just before we begin, <clears throat> the difference in chapter 11 is that uh, it does not begin on the head of gold or Babylon. Mm. Mm. The, the, the inception of this prophecy in chapter 11 is Medopagia. Unlike chapter 2 and chapter 7, where they talk about uh, Babylon. So whatever uh, Daniel is talking about here uh, starts uh, from the, the, the time of the Medopasia up until the second coming of Jesus Christ. I don't know if there's anything that... In fact, one of the interesting things with this one is uh, chapter 11, uh, Standard kind of moves away from symbols. Mm. Yes. It starts talking kingdoms now. Yeah. 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 Uh, while you know in the earlier chapters you you'd be you know God will be talking of beasts that are coming rams and goats that are you know but this time around God starts talking about two kingdoms the north and southern kingdoms it, it becomes clear yeah. and it starts talking to in fact there is uh, to your point some of the issues that are mentioned it latches on to chapter 8 when he talks about the glorious kingdom you know yeah. it, it it starts latches on to other to other uh, prophecies uh, whereby daniel can now and we can uh, you know as readers can start realizing that it's actually the same thing that is being spoken yeah. of but, <clears throat> but it's new perspective new course, perspective yes. is now given yes. as far as this is concerned yeah. and one of the things is that uh, that at the time in which uh, God reveals this uh, this to, to, to Daniel. Uh, Babylon had had long gone. Yeah, you know I, I don't know God's reason for not including Babylon, but I think you know God became a relevant God and says from where you are going forward, mm. this is what is going to to, mm. to to happen. You know, and I think once more um, one thing that comes across is 
Guys, we are going to look at this. We are going to look at history. Because remember, he's, God is, is, is given this uh, before it happens. Yeah. And, and as people who've lived past that, you know, who now have got a benefit of hindsight, we can look and say, has what God said happened? And if it did, what does it say about what God says is yet to happen? Yeah. yeah. So, so what you're trying to say as well is that there are things that had happened in these prophecies with, which we'll experience mm -hmm. still in our time. And going forward, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, then uh, we will move to prophecies about Persia and Greeks in and, and Greece in detail. Yes, yes. Um, the book of Daniel, especially in chapter eleven, Daniel chapter eleven is the most detailed prophecy yeah. in the whole book of Daniel. Mm. Like Brother Scrooge said that, um, and you also said that, from chapter two and chapter seven, eight, and nine, information is added. So the vision is repeated. And expand it. Yeah. And I love what Brother School said that, but now in chapter 11, this, the, the, the symbols are reduced. Mm. But now uh, kingdoms are called kingdoms and they are really called by name. Yeah. Kingdoms are called by name. And if we just go to, to, verse, to verse 1, it says also in the first year of Darius the Mede, and that's in the Median, even I stood to confirm and strengthen him. So the speaker here is the angel, the interpreting angel, mm -hmm. that's Gabriel. Verse 2, it says, And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength and through his riches, he shall stir up against the realm of Greece. Hence, that's what I'm saying. The first king of the Christian empire was Cyrus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, After Cyrus, the first king shall arise three more kings. That was Cambyses. That was the second after Cambyses was the false Medes. The false Medes, I think he ruled only for 522. And after the false Medes, it was Darius I, the Persian. Mm -hmm. yeah. Darius I was from 522 to 486. They ruled. And then the Bible says, after them will another, the fourth king arise, will be richer than them all. This fourth king is Xerxes, who in the book of Esther is identified as Ahasuerus. And we are told from Esther, Esther chapter 1, verse 1 to 7, how wealthy Xerxes was. And Xerxes is the one who stirred against the Greeks, who prepared an invasion to the Greeks, but was overcome by a small, valiant group of Greeks. So this is where we see how detailed it is. But now, uh, when you come now to, 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 to the third verse, it says, And a mighty king shall stand up. This is after the kings of Persia. Yeah. This is after Cambyses, the false Medes. Mm -hmm. This is after Darius. This is after Xerxes. And it says, A mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. Verse 4 will tell us who is this mighty king. Mm. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken. Listen to mm. that. And shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven, and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for others beside those. Now, there are a few things that we see here. Parallelisms between this verse 4 and Daniel chapter 8, verse 8. Remember in Daniel chapter 8, verse 8, we had a, a horn. Yeah. You remember the Hebrews, yes, yes, yes. Yes. which was a symbol of, of, of Greece. Yeah. If you go to Daniel chapter 8, verse 21, it will tell you that the he goat is Greece. And it says the horn that is between the eyes of the he goat is the first king of Greece. Maybe for the benefit of all of us, I think let us uh, extrapolate and, and explain uh, what was it the ram, was it the, was it the goat, what was there, so that we give the full description right. so the ram, of the prophecy okay, so that you are referring Daniel to. Daniel chapter 8, verse 20 tells us that the ram was, was Persia. Yes, mm. okay. And verse, that's chapter 8, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Verse 21 then says the and he goat the, yeah. was, was, was Greece. Yeah. And it says the horn that was between mm. the eyes of the he goat on the head was the first king of Greece. Yes. Now when you come to, when, when you repeat now and you rewind to verse 8 of chapter 8, it says the horn grew strong, mm -hmm. and then it broke and split into four, four winds, four winds yeah. of the earth. Yeah. And when you go, when you continue again with the chapter, we are told that the four divisions was the four generals of of the Christian Empire. Yeah. You see, and I love this because historical books tell us that when Cyrus's kingdom was divided among the four, yeah. it was because of he had no posterity. Yeah. That is why his kingdom was divided among his generals. Mm -hmm. But and no posterity. And the text here says that broken and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven and not his posterity. 
So it literally corresponds and correlates to the historical data yeah. when it comes to the position and the state of, of the Grecian Empire. So what you're clearly saying is that uh, this information is not thumbsack. It's somebody, if somebody doesn't believe what we're talking about, they can refer to history. History is going to say this is what happened. Yes, sir. This True. is the divisions of the kingdoms. Yes, These sir. were the kingdoms' yes, names. Sir. So it's something that we can explain and, and refer to history. Yes, it's not a thumbsack. something we can yeah. explain. And, and when it says the four winds, it simply means the four regions, the okay. quadrants, yeah. where the, the generals spread to when the kingdom of Greece was divided. Yeah. The first general, um, we know that it's Seleucus. Seleucus. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the part of the quadrant that he uh, uh, ruled under, or ruled, was Syria and Mesopotamia. Okay. Then we've got Ptolemy. Mm -hmm. who held Egypt, we've got Lysimachus. Lysimachus had Thrace and portions of Asia Minor. Mm -hmm. And then the last one was Cassander, who had Macedonia and Greece. And these were the divisions of, 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 of the Grecian Empire at the time when it was broken. I love the way that they put here, just the, 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 the statement that we've just made now. I'm just going to read it as it is. Please. Okay. Uh, the author says, uh, we can learn from this assortment of names, dates, places, and historical events. Number one, this is what we can learn. We can learn that the prophecy is, is fulfilled as predicted by the divine messenger. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then it says, God's word never fails. Yes, sir. Second, God is the Lord of history. We may get the impression that the succession of political powers, leaders, and kingdoms is propelled by the ambition of empires, dictators, and politicians or stripes. However, the Bible reveals that God is the ultimate control. So it is God that takes away kingdom, kingdoms. Yes. It is God that gives kingdoms. Yes, sir. So in as much as this happen in succession, we may see this king defeating this one and this kingdom defeating this kingdom. But it is God that is at play in the background. I think this was very important yeah, so very that we important. know that even eventually, ultimately, the kingdom that is going to be ushered, which mm -hmm. is the second coming of Christ, yes. even that one is going to be ushered by God himself. The eternal kingdom it, of stone. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, in fact, um, you know, when um, during Belteshazzar, when Belteshazzar sees the, the writing on the wall, yeah. and uh, you, you know, you read some materials, they'll tell you that whereas... Daniel was interpreting. He knew that this was the end because he had seen it. He had, he, he, from, in fact, from chapter two, he knew that their time will come to an end. Yeah. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, uh, what, how this, you know, how this helps us is that as king, sometimes as the children of God who live amongst these kingdoms, we, we feel that we are at the mercies of these kingdoms, yeah. you know. Yeah. And sometimes these kingdoms come across with such pomp mm. that they make you feel that your life is in their hands. Mm. And I think what, 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 what the, the, the lesson tells us, I mean, for, the, for, for what you're looking at, specifically around um, the Greek. You know, remember this was way before when, as he explains, you know, verses 1 to 4, mm talks before even Zexus even comes into power. Mm. And then even after that, he, I mean, God goes even beyond that to Greeks, you know. So, so uh, I think as Christians, I think as Christians, we must always be comfortable with the fact that sometimes we don't like the kingdoms. Yeah. And sometimes those kingdoms, unfortunately, abuse us, mm. you know, as Christians. Yeah. But we must always be comforted by the fact that God remains in control. Yes, yeah. sir. And I think, and God has got an end game. Yeah, it is true. And yeah. that, that must. So, in other words, we can't look at these kingdoms outside of the greater scheme of things. No, we can't. <laughs> yeah, yes, because we know better. We know no, exactly we what 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 is at play and what is going to culminate at the end of it all. Yes, and the author says that God is the controlling power behind. Yeah, He moves the wheel of history. For his own will, which is to overcome the powers of evil at the end of days. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So I think what's interesting now is when you start looking at um, the prophets of Syria and Egypt. Now, now we're the talk two, about Alexander the Great. Now, uh, in fact, after the four key, after the four generals has split it up. Okay. Then you start having two generals. Okay. Mm. Who establishes dynasties? And I think that is what uh, the North and the South kingdoms even starts becoming pronounced. Because it says uh, Ptolemy, who was the Egyptian 
the general who was the, the the general who was looking after Egypt. Yes, sir. And he is now being referred to as the Southern Kingdom. Mm-hmm. And then you start having the the Northern Kingdom, who is now uh, Seleucus. your Seleucus. Seleucus. Yes. <laughs> Seleucus. <laughs> now, no, no, no. What's What's interesting is um, is that um, Belteshazzar. Let me just take you back. Mm. Belteshazzar, as he, you know, he orders. He orders that please, please give me those those um, those utensils we got from mm. from Babylon. Mm. Okay, and he starts praising the gods of silver, the gods of gold, and all of that. And one of the things that was synonymous of Babylon was idol worship. Yeah. Okay. Now, what what you then uh, with with um, Seleucus being in control of Syria and Babylon. Yes. Now, the northern kingdom was actually a pagan kingdom. Mm-hmm. And all of that, it's been drawing from the fact that it came from Babylon. And Seleucus inherited those pagan beliefs. Mm. In fact, as you read from, um, uh, which is the period that is being accounted for, for the, the two generals from 5 to, to verses 15, you know, of chapter 11. Mm. It tells you of back and forth fights between those two generals. Yeah, between Syria and Egypt. Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. Between the north and southern kingdom. Mm. And, and, and you're starting to, 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 to find that both the two, as they establish these dynasties, they start, you know, swallowing up anyone who's smaller in between. Yeah. So they end up being the two dominating figures yeah. in the world history. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. With, with, with the northern kingdom predominantly considered a pagan one and the southern kingdom being an atheist one. Yeah. Mm. But if you then look at this thing in, 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 um, in 1798, you know, during the French Revolution, yeah. mm-hmm. that's exactly what happened. Yeah. It's when the atheists revolted against the pagans. You Which say, is the north and the south. Do, do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So you... And 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 there, so, you know, um, and and there's a reason why God even gave us all these things mm. to say, even though you don't form part of the pagan kingdom or the atheist kingdom, but these things affect you. Yeah. So God gives us an, a revelation of things that affect us. Yeah. Okay. So so um, in fact, one of the the as 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 they started trying to find peace between the the, the two of them, one of the things they did. Is they even intermarriages? intermarriages. Yeah. They even did intermarriages. Yeah. And um, as I gave you the verse, you know, yeah. <laughs> on rank two, yeah. and uh, or, or, you know that is found in in Psalms uh, one twenty seven. The brother tells me, "Now you are you going to marrying people, <laughs> people, people, people now by <laughs> Psalms chapter one twenty seven? Yeah. <laughs> so because what it says is that unless the Lord built the they, house, they labor in vain. They labor in vain. Yeah. Mm. So unless this piece of theirs was built by the Lord. Mm. Yeah, it was all it, useless. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is what, in fact, we find is that despite all their efforts between the northern and southern kingdom to try and have a, a lasting peace, they remain divided. Yeah. They really remain divided. They couldn't to unite. A point they, 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 couldn't, they couldn't unite. To a point whereby the northern kingdom, in verses 15, mm. uh, uh, managed to garnish enough forces to fully overthrow the southern kingdom, and this ushers in, this ushers in then the the the, the, the Roman kingdom. Mm. This ushers in the, the, the Roman kingdom oh, yes. as they as they get enough uh, enough uh, forces, you know, to overthrow. But there's something you know that you you start picking up you know from 16 onwards. I think my my brother here will be talking oh, about yeah, that. Yeah. So, yes. What I think is important as well, which which we should not lose sight of, because probably somebody might be asking the question: Why are we told about what happened in in history? Is it important? Does it affect us? I love the point that you made earlier. Mm-hmm. That how does this relate to us in this day and age in 20? 20. 20. <laughs> uh, in 2021, in 2025, to come. How does it affect us? You know, okay. the writer puts it much clearer than I am. Yes. He says, I the writer, in fact wanted the to says, go there. The reason is simple. I think exactly. I, did, I did mention it yes. because it affects us. Yes. Uh, the wars affect God's people. Certainly. 
That's so the point that you made despite, in fact, yes, initially, yes. which I wanted despite us to highlight that, and emphasize on. Despite the fact that these things are happening between atheists and pagans, they affect us. Yep. Because what you're now finding on, uh, you know, as you start looking at Rome and, 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 and now as Rome becoming an, uh, entrenched, some of the things like the imposing of taxes, yeah. Christians were not, you know, we're not left out of it. Do you get what I'm saying? And as we start reading, in fact, in the in the Gospels about how people were looked down because they're tax collectors, yeah, these are things that were imposed by these the, kingdoms. Yeah, you know that were not really, you know, the Christian of of in their nature. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now coming to Rome and the Prince of the Covenant. Coming to Rome and the Prince of the Covenant. Um, I love. Verse 16, it says, But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him, and he shall stand in the glorious land, which hmm. by his hand shall be consumed. Now here we find a transition of powers, yeah. where we are transitioning from the Hellenistic kings to Rome. To Rome. Hmm. Yeah. And the glorious land <laughs> is, 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 it was Israel, ancient Israel, where the ancient Israelites lived. Now, why does Daniel call it the glorious land? Because they were in exile, and their motherland, where the temple was, was glorious to them. Yeah. So when he talks about where they come from, which was in Palestine, in Jerusalem, in Israel, he would refer to that about the glorious land. Um, the transition of power, we know in history that Rome was the one that dominated in the glorious land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think also as we go on also with the verses, um, oh, before we even go there, in chapter 8 of Daniel, yep. in chapter 8 of Daniel, we, we told about the horizontal expansion yeah. of which the Roman little horn, which is the little horn. Yes, of yeah. the little horn in the face of pagan Rome, mm -hmm. which then spreads to what? To the pleasant land, mm -hmm. which is also the glorious so land. So this is geographical uh, expansion geographical of the little horn. Geographical expansion yes. of okay. the little horn. This yeah. is the I'm making that point land. so that we know the difference when we're talking about the horizontal expansion oh, of that horn. Yes, okay. yes. The horizontal expansion of the, military, uh, of the little horn is the military expansion of yeah. it in its um, uh, imperial phase. Yes. But the minute it changes to the vertical, it then became um, a papacy, the papacy, which was the Roman uh, kingdom to, together with a uh, religious agenda to supplant the powers of mm. heaven. But right now we're in the horizontal expansion. Yeah. So in, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 16, we are then told about a new power, yeah. which is the power of pagan Rome. And we are told about it in, in relation with the glorious land. So we automatically know that that's a military expansion. Yeah. That's when uh, Jerusalem came under the dominion of the Roman Empire. Yeah. And what I love is, there's somewhere in the text, I think, it's, I think it's about verse 21. No, no, verse 20. It says, then shall, talking about this king, yeah. this Roman king, then shall, shall stand up in his estate a razor of Texas, in the glory of the kingdom, but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. The razor mm -hmm. of Texas is Augustus, Caesar Augustus. I think if you go to mm. the book of Luke, it was just at the time when Jesus um, was to be born, where there was a census, and the parents of Jesus had to go to their mother town for a census there. At that time, the Bible says that the king of Rome who was in control was Caesar, Caesar Augustus. And so this is see that the razor of, 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 of Texas was Caesar. It was during the time of the Roman Empire. And it's also the second, it was also the second um, emperor of Rome, the second Caesar, who was Tiberius Caesar when Jesus got um, persecuted. Mm -hmm. And that's where we learn about the king, the prince of the covenant, mm -hmm. who was assassinated in a Roman cross under the kingdom of a very pompous emperor, which was Tiberius Caesar. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is where we see that this Verse, this prophecy, this section of the book of, um, of, of Daniel chapter 11 really talks about the time where the Messiah was crucified mm -hmm. as the prince of the covenant. Uh, it also talks about the time where Palestine, which is Jerusalem, got under the, the dominion of Rome. This part in history talks about that period. And I think as I'm listening to you, among other things that you are stating, I, I think you are emphasizing the, the, the point that you made earlier on when we mm -hmm. began that the prophecy that we're talking about today, which happens in the times of the 2,300 days, okay. is exactly the same as the prophecy that had happened in chapter 2, chapter 7, chapter 8. Yes, I'll keep uh, uh, repeating the point mm -hmm. so that we don't lose focus of that. Because eventually, we said that, as the verse suggested, that eventually we want to get the final gold, yes, that these things are leading to us being purified gold mm -hmm. and what is going to happen. For instance, 
Uh, you are talking about the little hole, talking about the, 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 the conquering, the horizontal conquering of the, I love your distinction of the papal Rome and the political Rome, yes. which we saw as well in chapter two, for an example, that is, that is, that is shown by the iron mixed with clay. We know that clay symbolizes the papal Rome and iron symbolizes the political Rome. Mm -hmm. yes, so I always want to compare and parallel all these kingdoms as we move along from the, the chapter two. Uh, of Daniel to chapter 11 of Daniel. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we should move now to the next, the next power. Part. Yeah. Now, now that is in operation. Now we we are seeing the uh, as 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 the kingdom now after it has done it has moved towards the Holy yeah. Land. Okay. okay. Horizontally. Horizontally. Yeah. Now from 29 we are starting to see it making a different turn. Mm -hmm. You know. Now we're seeing the northern kingdom making a different turn. Okay. Okay. And now I think why the northern kingdom, you know, I, I want us to continuously keep this in mind. Because the northern kingdom does come from Babylon. Mm -hmm. it, it keeps the traits of Babylon. Okay. And those are idol worship. It's pagan. So as, 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 as the pagan Rome transition to a papal Rome, it doesn't do so without keeping some of these pagan beliefs with it. Yeah, they move along with it. It, it, it moves <laughs> along. Hence, hence, it starts challenging uh, not only now the horizontal expansion yes. when yeah. it was dealing with the, the southern kingdom, yeah. when they were just fighting for territory. Mm. Now it actually starts challenging the heavenly agenda. Yeah. You know, that, that's that's really... Vertically now. Yeah, it's, it's yes. now starts <laughs> yeah. going vertically. It really yeah. starts going vertically. That's, yes. that, those are some of the things that it does. And and I think, uh, as you have mentioned before, you know, um, in chapter 8, there's a lot of similarities to 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 the four chapters. Yeah. 4, 7, 8, and uh, 11. Yeah. Okay. But 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 most of it, you start seeing them between 7 and 8, because 7 and 8 now starts introducing the spiritual aspects yeah. with eight becoming more pronounced you know yeah. and 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 that is what uh, ve uh, versus versus 29 to 40 does yeah. okay we'll talk to to some of them um and then it says it will rage it will on on 11 verses 30 11 verses 30 I'll read it in mind mm -hmm. for the ships of um, Shittim mm -hmm. shall come against him therefore he shall be grieved and shall re uh, and return, and have in indignation against the holy covenant. Mm -hmm. So, you're starting to see this kingdom now challenging uh, the holy covenant. So that's the part when it's now starts changing the gear to becoming a, 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 a. And I think as we go through it, you start seeing the same pattern that had happened in chapter eight. Mm -hmm. You know, it challenges. The holy covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so so shall he do. He shall even return and have a intelligence. Okay, mm -hmm. meaning uh, with them that forsake the holy covenant. So what it basically means is that anyone who was breaking God's law, it will go and have alliance with them. Mm -hmm. So that is mm -hmm. now 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 you are finding the northern kingdom. Now, not only becoming a, a kingdom in, anymore, now becoming a spiritual figure. Yeah. And now, in fact, it harbors anyone who's fighting against, uh, you know, the, the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. um, and, and not only that, I think, uh, I think on, in chapter 8, verses 11, it talks about um, that it will do away with daily sacrifices. You know, yeah. the little horn will do away <laughs> with the daily sacrifice. And we're finding the very same thing on 31, where it says that it will uh, pollute the sanctuary and shall take away the daily sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in doing so, the, you, what the papacy then did is that it takes away the daily sacrifices by pointing people. I think we, we mentioned this as we are doing chapter, you know, uh, chapter 8. It says the papacy then put itself in the place of Christ, yeah. where people, as part of daily sacrifices, they will come and, and, and say, forgive me, Lord, I've sinned. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm 
and they will pray to Christ himself. Yeah. Yeah. And then by, by, by organizing confession booths, by, by saying that you can, now, you can now pray through your priests, you know, it actually took away the sacrifices that were meant to go to Christ. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that, is, that, is, that is what it now did. So, Could I just interject there? I think a thought is coming, which, which is always mentioned by people when we talk about this part of the prophecy and others that refer to Rome, mm -hmm. that we, it seems as if we are taking the Roman Catholic Church, as it were, as an institution. But here we're talking about the system. We, we, we have to, to always emphasize this, that what we are referring to is the Roman Catholic system. It's not the Roman Catholic Church as it were, and, together with the contents that we're talking about. It, These, what we are mentioning, are the elements of the actual system. It, it, it's true. It's, it, it's really true uh, that the, the conversations are not personal. The conversations are not looking at the current pope and saying you are bad. Yes, you know, it actually says that. Unfortunately, you find yourself in a, in system. a system, in a system that promotes uh, taking breaking down the daily sacrifices. Yeah, a system that actually takes away the sanctuary of God. Mm. A system by by taking away the sanctuary of God. A, a system that says we actually don't have a holy of holies. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't have the Ten Commandments. Yeah. A system that does that. Yeah. You know, a system that says... A system that claims to forgive sins. Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. People and, confess and, to this particular system. Did, did you get what I'm saying? And not to God. And, and, and you, you now tend to, to do away with the work that Christ does mm. for us. The forgiveness of sin that Christ does for us. You do away with the expectation that Christ has on us that we should live a righteous life. Mm. You, you do away with those. And unfortunately, uh, you know, when when those beliefs contradicts what the Bible says, those we have to raise it up. You know, that's that's the nature of it. We we just have to raise it up. And by the way, these are things that are in the Bible, whether we raise it or not. <laughs> yeah. so people can read it for themselves. Yeah. And I think one of the things you, you you've said is that, um, you know, these things are, you can track it for yourself. It's it's not thumb sucks. Yeah. These are things that uh, you can ask yourself to say. Um, when it talks about these kingdoms being broken into two, when it talks about the northern kingdom now starting to to do away with the with the, the sanctuary services, did that happen? When it talks about the he, he spoke of the the four generals, yeah. did this thing happen? Yeah. So so that's that's that. It's not it's not really. Uh, and, and, and Christ says that when you see the abomination of desolation, yep. you know, Christ says, so. Spoken says of yes, he, spe he speaks <laughs> about it. He said, when you see the abomination of desolation uh, that was spoken of by Daniel, yeah. know the time is near. Yeah. And this is the time. This is the time. Of. Because, because um, in, 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 um, it, it also talks about the fact that it will put the abomination of desolation uh, that's one of the things that the the, the, the you know the, the north northern kingdom did, yeah. and and that abomination of desolation was purely the replacement of the the, the holy you know the high priest. Okay, that that was basically that. Um, and and I think now we will have to move uh, because of time to Daniel chapter eleven verse forty to forty five. Mm -hmm. I think that section we, we is very important for us to close with. Mm -hmm. To so because remember at the beginning we said that eventually we are heading somewhere. Mm -hmm. So after having spoken of all these kingdoms, the south, the north, these kings, you know, and the actions, the wars that happened in between them, what these beasts were representing, what these um, uh, uh, elements were representing. Now I think we have to point towards where we are heading so that we make sense of all these things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So chapter forty uh, to forty-five. Uh, sorry, rather, verse 40 uh, to 45, we know that it is the period that extends from the fall of the papacy mm -hmm. uh, up until the second coming of Christ, mm -hmm. uh, which have, have been 1798 up until the second coming of Christ. That's the time yeah. of the end. That is the time of the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is referred to as the, as, 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 as the time when these things that we're going to be talking about are mm -hmm. happening. I think I loved earlier on when we are at this time of the end that you made mention of that Rome is trying to eradicate the work 
of Christ in heaven right now. And as we believe that from the period 1844, Christ moved from the holy place to the most holy place, mm -hmm. where he's standing there as a high priest that is advocating for us when we sin, you know, mm -hmm. he is representing us in heaven right now. That is why we believe, uh, according to the Bible, that the investigative judgment has started in heaven right now, or the pre-advent judgment. We know that mm -hmm. there will be judgment, final judgment at the end. Yes, but in order for that final judgment to have substance, mm -hmm. it must base its, 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 its decision on the judgment that is happening right now. So where we are heading right now is the second coming of Christ. But it's important for us to know that what is happening in heaven right now, which this system is trying to fight, so that we shift our focus from the system and look at these things mm -hmm. that they say they are claiming to, to be doing when they can't even do it because they need Christ themselves, mm -hmm. you know, True. Yeah, these systems. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in heaven right now is that Christ is standing as our mediator. Uh, John I chapter 14, it. verse 1 to 3. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And yes, then he says, I go to prepare a place for you. In fact, in the original language, that verse is saying, I go there to prepare you for the place. Wow. In fact, Christ right now is preparing us for the place. <laughs> because the place is ready. So he's preparing us for the place in wow. that when we confess our sins, Christ is recording those things and, 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 and looking if we are in the book of life, recording the book of records, recording the book of remembrance. So that is the process that is going to be ushered, I mean, that is happening before the ushering in of the second coming of Christ. I'm saying that because after this comes chapter 12, which we will not be talking about today, but chapter 12, verse 1, which says, and at that time Michael shall stand, which talks about... Christ standing up and taking his robe uh, of, of advocating for us now to put on the robe of judgment, which is the close of probation. So before even the second coming of Christ, where the graves are going to be opened, where the people are going to be judged according to their works, Christ is going to stand. Michael is going to stand, which is representative of Christ. Michael is going to stand to seal his children, whether for good or for bad. Yes, sir. So when that time comes of Michael standing, there is no more time for Christ to inter to intercede for us. Mm. There is no time for me to say, for the sins that I have committed, I am confessing them, I am turning away from them, because um, uh, mercy would have been closed when Michael stands. And then that then would usher in the, the, the persecution and the second coming of Christ. Any comment on that? Uh, in the know, two minutes that are left? In the two minutes. <laughs> you know, uh, one thing that you, you get from from the lesson itself, okay. and in fact, throughout the book of Daniel, yeah. is that you have pagan kingdoms Yes, uh, that over many years, more than a thousand plus years, have actually ravaged God's people. Mm. And they have done that with impunity. Mm. There are times when God intervened, um, as in the case of Nebuchadnezzar. And, 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 and forced their hand to admit to the fact that the God of heaven is in control. Uh, but most of the time you find them, uh, you know, uh, having the view that we're in control. Yeah. Your God is useless. And I think when you close this uh, with uh, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, um, it, I think in, in the midst of all of this, we must always be assured that at the end of it, Michael will stand up. Hmm. And, and, and if we say, if we say we are in agreement with the fact that what God has had prophesied in the book of Daniel yeah. has rightfully come through, meaning that God was spot on in his prophecy. Hmm. When God then says in chapter 12, in the end, then Michael will stand. We have got no reason to doubt God as far as that is concerned. Mm. Uh, and as a result, we should, you know, at times it, it might seem very difficult. Uh, you know, when the, 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 the papal role took away, you know, sanctuaries and, and targeted and persecuted Christians, mm. God was still in control. Yeah. Even in our lives today, our lives, you know, we might look at it and we say, God... Why am I a tail? Yeah, mm. but just understand that God is still in control. On that note, I think we should close it. That God is in control, yes. and it's a beautiful note that we're closing it at because 
Um, in the midst of these occurrences, these wars, and the taking of the kingdom from this kingdom to the other, I think the children of God were asking themselves, what will mm. the answer be, or when is the end going to come, and what is going to be the un- ultimate end? And here, I think we are given comfort in the in the in the end that when Michael stands, all will be done away with, yes, and each and every one will be given according to their works. Uh, I think we've come to the end of a very intense um, study uh, of Daniel chapter 11, but I think we tried to 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 to, to extricate and, and 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 simplify it so as to see what these kingdoms are denoting, what these beasts are denoting, what these kingdoms are trying to tell us. And the next lesson will be lesson number 13, uh, which is entitled "From Dust to Stars." So we should be getting ready uh, for the next lesson that will be as exciting as this one. On that note, let us close to the viewers at home. Thank you for joining us. And we'll close with a word of prayer. School, are you going to close for us? Thank you. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord of God, that you have been with us. We ask you in the beginning of the lesson that you please help and guide us. Yes, Lord. And you are faithful to your promises, Lord of God. And you helped us as sinful as we are that we might convey your message. Lord, we thank you that you've used us as vessels, Lord of God. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to use us and the viewers at home, Lord of God, to shout your soon coming, Lord of God, and tell everyone, Lord of God, that you are truly a God that can be trusted. You are a God who is in control. Yes, Lord. And despite all that seems to happen, and right now, Lord of God, we are faced with many diseases in the world over, is worried about the coronavirus, Lord of God. And we ask you, Lord of God, that may you give us the comfort of the fact that you are in control. And may your peace that surpasses all understanding be with us uh, and forever. Amen.